I'm taking care of the pre-sales for the Coin City, for the Middle East and uh, the region here. And uh, our agenda for today uh, session is uh, we'll have a walk through um, the um, Coin City solution, the architecture in terms of architecture, how it is built, what use cases we are addressing and we are focusing on, and um, how we are doing it what are the um, way of delivering the solution exactly and what are the values out of that and uh, by the end of the uh, session uh, we'll leave like uh, two three minutes to have um, just to have a quick look uh, into the user interface management of the of the coin city solution uh, we will follow up on this uh, session with or this webinar with other webinars which will be dedicated for uh, specific use cases. So we can arrange for another one for the SQLs, another one for Oracle, another one for SAP HANA, the backup, another one for the uh, scale out NAS like that. But today is going to be um, not introduction only, but uh, let's say middle, a um, little bit more than uh, introduction, right? And it's going to be uh, a technical uh, discussion here. And uh, with that, uh, I'm going to uh, forward here, starting. So first, uh, let's see what, uh, what, where is the uh, playground for us here as a Kauai city? And what are the challenges that we are addressing and we are resolving? If you look at any enterprise data centers that you will see uh, multiple uh, components that is being acquired over the time, to address the challenge of the secondary storage use cases, right? And I'm talking about uh, use case like backup and uh, file and objects and uh, cloud archiving, for example. Now, all of them, or most of this, is, um, is representing some silos within the data center. And the proof for that is you need to have a copy or a full environment or setup for the data protection or the backup, right? But when you have any requirements for analytics or test dev environment, so you are making another copy and you go and buy uh, another storage just for the test dev environment, for example. So whatever data you put on that backup setup is going to be sitting there idle, just waiting for the time to be recovered, right? So there are silos on this part, but if you are dig down more, you will see sub silos within the data protection itself. Um, most of the time you see that people, they have uh, virtual as well as physical, right? So for the physical environment, most probably they have some applications or database which cannot be backed up by the software which is used for uh, the VMware or the virtualization backup, right? So customer end with having two backup setups, one for the physical and one for the virtual, right? But the story is not ending here because these backup softwares, they require uh, more compute, right? Like um, media server and master server, proxy servers, so more components need to be added here and they need as well target storage you may have one target storage for the backup software which is handling the virtualization and another target storage for the backup software which is handling the physical environment right so we are talking about three or four components here just to address the data protection or the backup only now what is the problem here of having multiple components the problem is first of all the cost obviously second is the complexity for the operation because they just need in the morning to check the status of the last night backup they need to log in maybe into two solutions or two in user interface right if they want to plan any upgrade or any change on the um, uh, on the on the setup they have to look into very complex compatibility matrix maybe right in order to make sure all the relevant components within that setup, within that design, is going to work perfectly after this upgrade. 
So the complexity is not a never ending story here with the silos. The same thing if you go to the file and object use cases. So people started with having, you know, the NAS storage or let's say SMB and uh, NFS or the SIFS protocols. But after some time they get the requirement because of their data growth and they have some new applications which are requiring, let's say, object storage, right? And for that, the legacy NAS storage usually is not giving that out of the box. So they have to get some gateways or let's say object storage gateways, right? So the complexity is going to be increased here as well. Or even worse than that, if the customer is not bringing that NAS storage dedicated one, so they are utilizing the existing SAN storage, right? For the user file share. And we know the cost of the SAN storage. And this is something that is not built for the actually user file share. Right. It is for the transactional data, you know, for databases, for the uh, production application, but not for the user documents and video sharing collaboration, mainly. And also, once, once the customer start talking about cloud initiatives and they want to have, let's say, cloud archiving. So all these legacy solutions are not architect to work with the cloud because it's been architect way back in time that there is there was nothing uh, called cloud at all right so now they have to figure out a way to send or talk to the cloud right so you have to bring something like a translator in between right so you have the silos you have the darkness of the data the more component and the more copies of the data the 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 dark the darkness you get uh, more here for the data because you are not able to search, for example, across all the workloads you have from the secondary storage point of view. Right. Now, what we did in Coacity is we created a platform which can consolidate and collapse all these silos into one place or one platform, let's say, and addressing the use case of the data protection the file share, the object storage, and the cloud integration as well. And this platform is coming on a software-defined approach in a hyper-converged architecture, right? On a commodity uh, servers, x86 servers, and addressing these use cases, and also managed from one user interface, regardless of how many cluster you have, how many data center you have doesn't matter whether it is running on-prem or it is running in the cloud. And on top of that, we built what we call it Coicity Marketplace. So the idea here is to bring the compute to the data. So instead of having some applications that need to access this, this copy for analytics or for test or for some scanning, so we can have these apps now running as a Docker container on top of the Coicity platform directly, right? And I will give examples here. So if you are using Coicity for the, let's say, scale out NAS, so people need to have a reports like auditing, <clears throat> sorry, auditing reports, like who access which file, which user trying to access which restricted file, and, and you can track the user activities like that. Right, in terms of the um, uh, security or the uh, authentication and the authorities for the um, for the files or the corporate assets, right? So this is something that you can have it from the Coicity Marketplace. It's a free app. You download it into your Coicity cluster, whether it is on-prem or in the cloud. Another example here, if you are using Coicity for data protection or backup, so for that. Usually people, they go and do a vulnerability scan on the production servers, right? So the idea here is offloading this task of the vulnerability scan from the production servers to the backup data, right? So your data now or your backup data is not sitting idle doing nothing for three months or six months or one year waiting for a time that you have a, requ a recovery requirement. No. It's going to be as an active 
data, right, on demand. So you get a value out of this backup data or this file share, right? So you are going to consolidate from having external compute running these apps. That's something you can have it within the Coin City itself because we have the Kubernetes framework within the platform. Right? So this is like extra values here. But the main thing here is the data management, the ability to ingest the data into the platform, whether it is coming through backup or it is coming through file share or the NAS. Now this platform is having, in order to design such platform, there are some elements that need to be addressed or need to you need to make sure that you have it. Right? So the number one characteristics or the element here is the scale out architecture. If you are talking about secondary storage use cases like the backup, like the analytics, like the file share, you need to have scalable solution because here we are talking about petabytes or hundreds of terabytes, right? If you don't have this scalability, then you are creating silos, another silos, or you are creating multiple islands, you know, within, within your data center. So the Coacity platform is a scale out architecture means you start today by what you need and you keep adding nodes and each node is going to be part of the performance and the overall storage capacity of the cluster or the setup. So you scale out in terms of the performance, in terms of the capacity, but you scale up in terms of the feature and the functionality, right? Other thing here is the storage efficiency and resiliency. Because of the, the, the bulky nature of the data we are targeting here, you need to have very efficient storage. Otherwise, you are going to increase and keep adding, adding more storage, right? And you will have a lot of duplicates here because these copies, when we talk about backup, usually you can see, you can ask any customer. The daily change rate is not going to go beyond 5%, 4%, you know, this is for the large environments, 6%. But most of the customers I see here, especially in this region, is you can think about 1% change or 2% uh, daily change rate, okay? Which is affecting actually how much data you need to ingest on the data, on the storage here. And the rest is going to be a duplicate from the previous backup, for example, right? So you need to have this efficiency. And because of that, we have well, or we implemented the variable links deduplication here, which can check and access or let's say assess the data while it is coming to the OECD. Okay. And even if the block sizing is got changed from user A to user B, still we can detect that this is a duplicate data and we are going just to update our metadata but we are not going to write that duplicate uh, block again, right? Other things here and very important is the data mobility. So because we are company born in the cloud, so you can have a coincidence in cloud as a full cluster, or you can have it as uh, just acting or using some storage from the cloud, right? So you can move the data between the on-prem to the cloud, right? So this data mobility and even moving the data between clouds, not only on-prem to the cloud, but you can move from Azure to AWS, from AWS to Azure, or from AWS to Google, right? As long as you have the cohesity component there, right? Other things like the mega files and uh, minions uh, management. So. You can see all the storage uh, vendors. Um, they are struggling with two things. Number one is the very large files. And number two is the very small files. Right? And I'm going, I'm going to talk in more details in coming slides about the mega files and the minions here. But this is something that we are having very unique way for it. And on the way we are handling the very small files. Just to give you an example here, applications like EV or the um, call recordings, which is generating millions 
of very small files. If you have the storage with a fixed block size, you are going to waste a lot of space on that storage, right? If, in, if, if it is application that is generating very small files. And I said that it's a software defined. And the good thing here is when you have that solution as a block based, or let's say as a hyper converge, but without the need of having the hypervisor here. So we are running on the bare metal directly. And you have unlimited number of snapshots and clones, whether that's for the backup or for the NAS use case here. And I'm going to talk more also about the instant mass restore and how it is important in case of the restoration or on, on the speed, the time required to get back to business in case of any disaster. Okay. And such platform always use or always uh, need the uh, non-disruptive upgrade, whether it is on the software or the expansion on the capacity as well. So you should have the ability to add or remove nodes from the cluster without any disruption into the operation, right? Because if we are talking about hundreds of nodes, we have customers with 300 nodes and 400 nodes within the same cluster. And imagine that you have the, uh, you don't have this feature. If you don't have this feature, then people are going to struggle, right? That's why we made sure that you have one click upgrade here and you just up upload that file or the new version and go away, leave it, right? And you come after some time and you'll see everything is being came to the new release now. Okay. Uh, just a reminder here, if you have any question, please put it on the chat window and I will check it from time. So the, uh, the first element we talked about or we mentioned is the software defined platform. So the platform can be delivered on multiple ways. The first version or let's say the first approach is you can have it as a virtual machine or virtual appliance on top of existing hypervisor environment you have. For example, it can be as a virtual machine on top of VMware or Hyper-V or Nutanix Acropolis right, or KVM. And this is mainly for the robo sites or let's say the virtual data centers. The other way is the robo or the I, uh, IoT edge or the edge environment. So even though we have the virtual edition, but suppose that the customer doesn't have or don't want to have a virtual environment in their uh, remote office. So in that case, we have very small uh, boxes which can be uh, installed there. And it's a matter of plugging the network and the power and you are good to go. It doesn't require pre-configuration there. Or I mean, it doesn't require another configuration after you uh, started there, okay? But the majority of the use cases, this is for the enterprises or the actual, uh, or let's say the scalable solution is when you have it as a hardware or as an appliance. So we work with existing hardware vendors like HPE, like Cisco, Dell, Fujitsu. And this is where you can have the solution coming on their hardware. We have certified bill of materials for that. So for example, with HPE, you can have the end-to-end -end solution of the Coacity coming on a DL380 or coming on Apollo servers, the Apollo 4510 or the Apollo 4200 or the Apollo 2200. It can come also from Cisco end-to-end, -end, the software and the hardware running on the hardware of the UCS or the S series, the S32160, right? Same thing with Dell. The, the only difference here with Dell and Fujitsu, this is like meeting the channel. So as a partner, you will request the hardware from Dell or Fujitsu and you request the software license from Coicity. But for HPE and Cisco, you can have the full solution from them because it's an OEM. Apart from that, we have our own hardware, of course, right? So we have different models, the 6000 series, the 4000 series, the uh, 3000 series, right? 
and different models, different configuration, and different uh, capacity. It's good to mention here also is the licensing. So the license of the Coicity always is coming from the back end capacity. So we don't care how many virtual machines you have uh, or the customer have. We don't count how many CPUs you have. It's all about how much capacity you are going to utilize from the Coicity, whether it is physical appliance or the virtual edition or the cloud edition as well, because we can run in the cloud natively. So you, for example, you can go to Azure, create three virtual machines, and you have the Coicity software running on them. So you have three node cluster there, or whatever number, right? Or you go to AWS and you create that EC2 instance, three instance, or one instance for POC, and you have the Coicity cluster there. The same thing with the GCB or the Google Cloud Platform. So uh, this is what I explained just on the previous slide, but it's uh, in more details. And uh, the good uh, thing to note here is we starting to form the cluster by minimum three nodes. Okay. And you can scale for unlimited number of nodes. So we go for unlimited or infinite number of nodes within the cluster here. Okay. We introduced recently also the all flash nodes. So it used to be only the hybrid, which is having like two or three SSDs and the rest of the disk are spindle disk or SATA disk. And now we have the all flash as well. And mainly this is being used for the high performance NAS use cases. But for the backup, usually people go for the hybrid nodes. And we have larger nodes that is for the archiving. And this is, we're talking about 16 TB disk uh, here based because we are using the erasure coding here. So you can have the deep archive on specific nodes if you like. Now let's get deep into the architecture here on the span of S. So the span of S is the name of the file system. And I said in the beginning, it's a distributed file system. So by the, the definition, that means that there is no reliance on a specific node on the operations. So each and every node will be having all the components of the software stack here, of the Coicity file system. So each node will have all this, the data journal, the cluster management, the snap tree, and the uh, distributed key value store, right? And they are acting all together as a one platform. From the management perspective, you can just pin or go to the any IP address of any node within the cluster or the cluster IPs into any browser, and you are good to go to see the full cluster there and manage it. So there are some components here, um, just to, to mention a couple of them. The cluster management, this is the one which is responsible um, for adding and removing any new node, right, into the cluster without any disruption into the operation. And you can see as well, we have the distributed key value store, and this is the responsibility or it's taking care of the responsibility of the um, distribution of the data across the nodes within the cluster or distribution of the task. So if there is one task is coming, whether it is a write request, read request, or searching request, right? So it's going to be distributed across all the nodes, right? So suppose that you have a very large file, let's say 50 GB file, only one 50 GB file. So to ingest that 50, 50 GB file, we are going to split it into chunks and each node within the cluster is going to participate on that right request. So you have faster ingestion of the data here. On the right side, you can see the QoS, which is responsible for the quality of the service uh, profiles based on the workload criticality or the business requirement here. So you can have some workloads finishing the backup on a faster or writing first to the SSD and then eventually move it to the spindle disk. 
or you can have other profiles for test name environment or other profile for file share for example or as a target storage for other backup softwares right so that is the uh, qs component responsibility here and then the snap tree which is the technology and the ip of the cohesity and this is the one which is allowing us to make what we call it instant mass restore this is in case of the backup use case if you notice i'm talking I'm, I'm i'm switching sometimes between the backup and the nas right the thing is because we are a data management platform you can have this solution for end-to-end -end backup solution right or you can have it as a backup target storage or you can have it as a scale out nas so the starting point is the scale out nas if you add the license of the data protect then it becomes a full backup solution so during the session and the talk i'm always shifting and mentioning which feature is for the backup which component is being used for the nas mainly like that okay now if you go up on level on the platform or the span face, you see the api layer and this is where the presentation of the storage is happening to the apps or to the um, access accounts, let's say, right? And that access or that uh, representation is happening on SMB or NFS or S3 and the SWIFT protocol as well, right? So whether that app is running on CoinCT as a container or that app is outside, let's say, third party backup solution, or end user is accessing the file share on Coicity, or it is the data protect um, feature of the Coicity, which is running within the SpanFS actually. Right? That's why you don't see the arrow coming from data protect to the API, because it is bundled inside the SpanFS. It's running as a service inside the SpanFS file system. Okay. So this is a quick look into the architecture. If you zoom in into any node within the cluster, you will find these surfaces and this architecture. Now, as a summary for the use cases, you see the first one on top is the backup and recovery, right? So you can get rid of all the legacy backup software and their target storage, their proxy servers, and all of that component, and you have the coincity with the scalability here. And this is addressing the majority of the databases, the majority of the applications for the enterprises. From Oracle to SAP HANA to Exchange to Office 365 to SQL to Hadoop, all this is certified to be protected by Coincity. The other use case I'm going to the left side is the smart files. And this is the file share or the scalability or the NAS uh, axis here. So you have the backup. You have the backup target storage and you have the NAS use case here. From the right side, you can see the disaster recovery and this can be on another physical data center of the user or another or maybe on the cloud. And for that, we have the ability to you know, take backup on-prem and then replicate it to another Coincity cluster in cloud and we have an application called Runbook app, which is doing the DR orchestration and the automation. And it's a free app included or provided from Coincity to, it's a drag and drop. You can select virtual machines, you select applications from the existing VMware example, right? And put it on that graph within the app and you can define which application or which virtual machine need to be restored first how much time you need to wait between the restoration of the virtual machines or the apps. So for example, you restore first the DB and then you restore the app and then you restore the web-based uh, server, for example. Okay, so that is for the DR. It can be, as I said, another physical coincity storage or another uh, DR instant. I mean, cloud instant. Azure, AWS, GCP, or any S3 compatible cloud service provider. The long-term archival use case here is because we have the density, the higher density 
in the market for um, uh, in the terms of the HCI architecture and the direct attached storage. So we have the ability, we have some nodes. We're talking about 700 TB, for example, in one node. And for simple cluster for that node is we're talking about 1.4 petabytes of usable capacity here, right? And this can be very well used for the long-term archival. And because we are using erasure coding different levels, so for example, if it is for archiving, you can use erasure coding 5.1, for example, right? Or the 8.1, which is giving around 83% usable capacity out of the row within the cluster. Other use cases like uh, data center migration or NAS migration or extension for the existing NAS storage or the security compliance for GDPR or the WARM and the data lock uh, capabilities. But I can tell that 80% um, or 75% of the use cases, the majority are the backup and recovery, the smart file and the disaster recovery use cases. The others, yes, we are able to do it. And um, and we are able to do it very well also. Very important point I wanted to mention within this webinar, and I wanted to make sure that uh, you, you, you got it. It is the security architecture here. By the definition, when we say that the architecture is distributed file system, that means as an operation team, I have less security domains to be worried about. Because if you compare this with the traditional architecture, where you have multiple components, so as a security admin, I need to secure multiple security domains, what we call it security domains here. I need to make sure that my proxy server is secure. I need to make sure my master server is secure. My um, agents are secure my uh, media server is secure, right? But here with Coicity, since we don't have this terminology or we don't need these components, so the focus is going to be, or the security domains is going to be reduced here, right? This is from the architecture or the number of the components, security domains point of view. But if you go to the SpanFS itself, it's handling the way it is handling the data, this is what we call it immutable file system. So immutable backup, that means that if there is any attack or the malware got, let's say, access to the uh, backup admin credential or whatever reason or whatever scenario. So the worst case here um, scenario is going to happen is that malware is going to request uh, recovery, right, or access to this backup data. But as a coincidence is immutable, we are going to make a clone and give the access to a copy of the data, regardless who is requesting this data again. Okay? So the worst case uh, is going to happen on a copy of the data. The actual blocks which has been written for this time on the coincidence, that is not going to be touched, regardless who is requesting for that one. Okay? So the backup data is always going to be secured and immutable here. Yes, we do test dev environment out of this, but that is going to be another clone of the backup or the actual blocks, okay? This is in terms of the data or the protection, or let's say the uh, protection against ransomware. But how about the detection? Let's say that bad things happens, and how I'm going to detect that? So within the software, we have a component or we have an AI-based um, algorithm which is uh, checking all the backup data while it is happening and after it is happening and checking the trends of the backup. And it can give a report and it can detect if there is any attack on any production server which has been backed up by Coicity. It can detect that one and it can tell that, okay, there is abnormal activity on this specific server and it's going to give the user the recommendation from which backup he can or she can recover. So it gives recommendation about the cleanest and updated copy or the recent copy of the data, which they can restore from. 
okay? That is from the detection point of view. And once that is being detected, also it's going to be isolating that uh, the affected copy of the data, and it's going to inform the uh, end user and giving the recommendation where and how to restore, but also is going to inform the support and automatically if you are allowing that, and they are going to take care of this for you. Last point here is very important in terms of security. We know that all the ransomware attacks uh, or the malwares, they are trying the number one target for them is the Active Directory, right? Once they get their hand on the AD, then everything within the network or that intranet can be compromised or will be compromised, right? And for that reason, we added the functionality to protect the Active Directory. So you take backup of the AD, let's say every one hour or every two hours with the Cohesity, and you have the capability to make a comparison later on which objects has been changed exactly. And you can restore that object only. Or you can even restore the attributes of the objects within the Active Directory. Okay. Some of the high level functionality, or let's say more details about the functionality of the platform here. Uh, I mean, on the solution, whether it is on the platform point of view, the security, data management, or the cloud and multi tenancy, this is in case of the service provider use cases. I'm not going to go through all of them and just um, discussing a number of the points here. If I start from the platform, we talk about the cloning with the unlimited number of the clones and the snapshots you can do here. And uh, the variable links deduplication, which is very important here, which is giving very high efficiency or deduplication ratios. The erasure coding, which is responsible for uh, making sure the data has been protected uh, on number of nodes and you are protected against uh, any failures from the disk perspective or the node perspective, right? If I just move forward in the security, we talked about the Active Directory and we can integrate with number of, of Active Directory domains here. So for example, if the customer is having number of AD domains, if there is any trust relationship between them, all what they need is to add only one domain into the Cohesity, and then they can see or they can search and assign any user from all the other domains. If there is no trust relationship between them, we allowing adding multiple active directories within the platform as an authentication source. So if you are creating the NAS share from the Cohesity and you have you can have multiple active directories or users coming from different ADs domains here. If I move forward to the right side, I'm just picking number of features here. The solution is really uh, feature rich, so it's it's uh, it's not possible to cover it on one session. So just giving the examples here. Right? So the data lock, which is very important for some customers in terms of the compliance requirements, especially on finance, uh, on medical, uh, or the healthcare sectors, where they have data that need to be maintained and uh, they need to comply with the requirement of not deleting or not altering this data for the specific period of time, can be months, can be years, right? So we have that capability, whether it is for the NAS or the backup data, okay? File filtering, this is the ability to have a specific file format added into the file share, or you are allowing the users to put specific file formats as a, as a whitelist, or you can blacklist it. So you are not allowing them to put, for example, uh, videos or images, right? So it depends on the format you need. That is something you can configure it within Cohesity here. The multi-tenancy, this is and applicable to all the backup use case or the uh, NAS use case as well, where you can have that um, segregation and the self-service portal for the end user or the tenants. And this, Whatever I'm talking about here is going to be applicable, whether you have the physical Cohesity cluster or the Cohesity virtual cluster or in the cloud itself, right? The RBAC or the rule-based access control, this is for the how to give the right access to the right people, 
and everything within the user interface of CoICT can be customized in terms of the access. So you can give specific users access as operators and they see only specific backup or specific components or you give, for example, the, your SQL admins the ability to log in and see the backup of their SQL database. It can be as a, just a view or you can make it as a just they can even they do the backup by themselves. They justify the backup there and they can do the recovery. Right? So you can customize all of this. The RBAC is very rich within the platform here. Moving forward, I'm giving here some screenshots about the, the functionality we talk about. For example, when you create the cluster, second step is to create what we call it storage domains. So that storage domains is a virtual representation of a specific amount of storage within the cluster, right? And for each storage domain, you have the ability while to uh, whether to turn on or off the inline deduplication or make it post process. And the same thing for the compression. And you define as well the encryption and the, uh, the erasure coding or the resiliency of that storage domain. So you can make multiple storage domains, each for a specific department. Or if you are enabling the multi tenancy, you can have one storage domain for each tenant, or you can have one storage domain for all the tenants altogether. So this is a way to organize the things within the story and to have the ability to control this process of the deduplication and the compression. I talked before about the small file optimization. So by default, whenever a block is coming into Cohesity, we check that block size, whether it is more or less than 4K or it is more than 8 MB, or it is um, uh, less than M, uh, 8 MB. So based on the nature of the block, we are going to write it on a specific place without wasting any storage capacity here. This is the key point. When you have an application that is generating tens of millions of small files, 1K, 2Ks, right? All the storage vendors, they are struggling for that and affecting, and this is affecting the efficiency of the storage as well as the performance right while here in coacity you can define and you can change the block size where we are handling uh, while we are handling that block of the io okay the uh, deduplication i mentioned before so you can turn it on or off on the storage domains or on the share level as well right and is going to be, first of all, a global deduplication. That means it's going to happen across all the uh, nodes or the nodes within the cluster, regardless of how many nodes you have, or regardless who are the sources of these blocks. Okay. Same thing for the compression, configurable, and can be managed from the storage domain level or from the share or the directory level. Okay. This is the erasure coding. As I said, we have multiple or different levels, depends on the number of the nodes you have. And this is something can be changed on the fly later on. So for example, if you are having or forming the cluster with three nodes only. So here you have the option for the erasure coding two, one, or the RF2 and RF, uh, it's only RF2 here, right? So after one year, you added another one node or two nodes. So you need to have higher level of the erasure coding, for example. So you can change that one after the fact, after having any data or after having already some data within the cluster here. As an alternative option, you have the resiliency factor or the replication factor here. So you can have RF2 or the RF3, depends on the number of the nodes you have. You can set the, as you can see, the quota here, whether it is physical quota or a logical quota as well.
this is the encryption and can be turned on or off on the storage domains and uh, we have an internal KMS, KMS or key management server but you can plug in your external key management server or key manager as well if you like that is also possible here and if you are using QCT and you are doing let's say archiving into the cloud so this data is going to be replicated as an encrypted data as well and it's good to mention here we have two types of uh, we can do the uh, the data at rest uh, encryption as well as the in-flight encryption so while we are doing replicate to other site another quantity or a blob storage or uh, another storage in the cloud so that can be encrypted as well here if we come back to the legacy uh, backup setup we mentioned that you need to have multiple components here so the transformation is happening on the architecture or overall environment here so instead of having this multiple components like media server master gateway target storage so you can transform all this into a scale out architecture software defined coming in a hyper converged way right so that means you will have faster distribution uh, for all the operations whether it is the read or the ingestion because it's a distributed file system and because of the snap tree technology you have the ability to do that uh, instant mass restore so you can scale on the restore itself so instead of just restoring one virtual machine or four or eight at a time you can select tens or hundred at a time and all is going to be mounted into your new environment of the vmware or hyper-v or nutanix this is in case of virtual and you can power on all of them at the same time because it's going to be saved from the coercity storage the warm capability the right ones read many is the first security and the ransomware protection or the compliance requirements right. and the same thing or the same transformation is going to happen from the production into the cloud or the dr side so you, then you will have is that simply say, uh, simplification of the operation right or the simplicity and you have the efficiency in terms of instead of having multiple copies of the data you have one platform addressing all these data requirements test environment backup and analytics i'm going to pause here for a minute and see if there is any question uh, for me so uh, the first question i see here uh, it's been answered i believe by Amr. yeah supporting uh, linux physical servers that's correct uh, was the hypervisor used by curiosity yeah that is also answered so we don't need any hypervisor just to extend more here uh, the file system or the software is running on a customized centos uh on the physical server or that, that physical x86 server coming either our server or the hp or the dell servers here okay so there is another question here coercity can have a long-term retention and can comply with dd from EMC, if so, what is the difference from ECS for long-term retention? So the difference here is, first of all, it's a software-defined solution, right? Yes, I'm managing the archive. Yes, we are addressing the same use case, let's say the archive, when we talk about the archive. But the key difference here is that it's not only for the archive. You can have it for different use cases, the same box. So ECS or another solution is created or it's being architect to address specifically 
archiving, let's say, right? But here I'm talking about multiple use case can be done from the same solution. This is the key things. Other things in terms of the architecture, it's software defined. There is no property hardware here. You can have it uh, on a different uh, hardware. You can have it in the cloud itself, right? That is the, that's the main difference here. How is the space utilization on immutable snapshot? That's a good question. So the thing here is, even though it is immutable, but we are doing the global deduplication here. This is number one. Number two is we are doing zero cost clone. So when you try to access that data and we are doing the clone and giving you access to a clone, that clone is happening on the metadata level, right? If you are doing any change, then only we are going to write that change if it is not exist on the blocks or on the underneath historic at all. Okay, so it's a, we call it zero cost clone um, snapshots. Uh, can it be connected to IBM Power uh, Power I platform for backup? The answer is yes. So for the IBM um, the uh, the mainframe series, uh, the S series, and the other one. So we have an app on Coicity Marketplace called Module 9, which is handling, running on top of Coicity, and it talk with the uh, mainframes, and then it's taking, generating the data or the backup from the mainframe and writing it to Coicity. Another question here, what is the instance required on the AWS to perform POC? So for, for POCs, you can even have one instance. So that is, um, um, M5, yeah, MD54, MD54, yeah, MD54, right? So you can have one node of it. But for the production, always the recommendation is to have the three nodes in the cloud, okay? So the smallest one there in the cloud, you can have one node, and uh, that EC2 instance, it's going to have 16, um, 16 GB, I believe, and uh, four uh, or two TB, two TB requirements there. But it is, you know, it's built the consumption. So you don't have to pay upfront for all. Yeah. Another question here is for the price for Coicity for archiving versus ECS, please. So I'm not going to give any numbers because basically I don't have it, it's with the sales, but uh, I can tell that where is the saving is happening. So instead of having that ECS only acting as archive, when you have the coicity, it can be for archiving, it can be and making that archive as an active data. So you can plug into it, any application, you can do the search. So this is the real here or the real, uh, the real deal. So instead of having just archiving data, but you are going to have archive and active data out of this data. At the same time, maintaining that, archiving characteristic or the requirements as an archive data. How about the OS? So there is no any license for OS here, right? So the license is for the data platform. That is the basic license. And then you have the license of the data protection in case you are using Coicity for backup. There was a question for uh, MSB, how it is the licensing? So uh, we have programs for uh, service providers and um, you, if you leave your, uh, yeah, I think we have the contacts. So our team can get back to you about the model of the service provider. So we have basically uh, pay as you grow or pay as you consume or pay, pay, pay per use uh, programs here for safe, specifically for service providers. Um, the question here, how long the support? So if I got your question, so it's a, the license here, it's a subscription license. Okay, so you can have the support from one month onward as you like. And it's including the support, I mean, the license itself. Once it's become subscription, that means everything is included within the license. The right to use and the right to get the support.
Okay. How are we doing in terms of time? I don't see other question here. Okay. So in a very few minutes, I'm going to uh, give just a quick show for the... Uh... Sorry, Mohanad, would you like to ask yes. quotes? Would you like to ask the attendees if they would like to see the GUI? Yeah, this is what I'm going to share now. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to share this actually. Do you see my screen now? Yes, we can. Okay. So I'm logging to um, our demo environment here. Now, this is Helios. Helios is a SaaS model. This is where you can have multiple cluster managed all together. But there is a cloud instance, or the, it's, a, it's a cloud based, but you can have it on prem as well, the Helios management. So you can see here I'm managing 100 clusters all together from a single user interface here. And you can have different dashboards, one for uh, data protection. So you can have very high level view of all the backups which is happening across all the data centers you have. Which data center is doing the backup job at time? What errors are there? How is the replication between the data center? which data center is replicating to which data center, and all these details can be shown here. Another, for example, um, file services, the dashboard for the file services. You can have this for the specific cluster or for overall, and you see what type of files and folders and data that you have within this file share, if you are using QCT as an NAS storage, okay? Interestingly here, we have a dashboard for the security part, so you can see if there is any abnormal activities between or on any of the virtual machines or the sites you have, right? So if I click on any virtual machines, you can see what happening here, when it, it, when it got happens, and what is the clean um, snapshot. So you can see here the latest clean snapshot. So if you got the attack here at this point of time, the software or the platform is going to give you when or where to from where you can get back to business so if you can see here this is an obelisk snapshot so you can see another one clean snapshot so you can get back to this one for example right so it's giving you a very nice overview about the uh, ransomware protection or the abnormal activities here but also you can do the cyber scan that is the app of the um, scanning for the vulnerability on all the data now, if I go back to the main dashboard here, and I can go and dig down on a specific uh, cluster, for example, and I see all the operations within that cluster. So you can see on the left side here, data protection, next is file services. When I said we have one user interface to manage whatever use case we are addressing, this is what I'm talking about here. So if you are using QCT for data protection or backup, just expand here, you work from here if you have that license. Otherwise, the file services is already available and included within the data platform license. Okay. On the main dashboard here, you can see the storage. Uh, you can dig down on it in terms of the uh, consumption, how much data is being transferred, how much data actually is written after the duplication, after the compression. And you can change the view as you like here. Okay. If I go to performance, I can see the overall performance of the cluster or the, and the in terms of overview or CPU, memory, and so forth, right? Or I can go to specific nodes and see the performance metrics of that node. Okay. Or as a storage domain as well. Now, if I come to data protection, just a quick overview here. If you come to the sources, so this is what we are able to um, certify for the backup now from the starting from the virtual environment. It can be vCenter or it can be standalone SXI server or cloud director, VCD, 
or Hyper-V, Acropolis, or any cloud instance as well, right? Or RHV, it had virtualization. So you register that source. And once you register it, you will be able to see the objects within that source and you start the protection, okay? So if I go to this VMware and I can see all the objects managed under that vCenter, I can search by the name here, or I can see on the folder architecture, right? And I select a specific folder, uh, folder and whatever virtual machine under that folder is going to be protected by this policy. And I can do the policy and select uh, via virtual machine tags as well, right? So if you do policy like that, later on any virtual machine newly created having this specific tag, it will be automatically added to that policy. Okay, and how to create this policy is here. You have some predefined policies, but you can create your own policy. And the first thing you put a name for that policy and you select the frequency of the backup. How often you are taking that backup? Daily, weekly, hourly, minutes, um, every some minutes or some months, whatever. And how for how long you are keeping it? The retention. Days, weeks, months, years as well, right? And it is configurable here. Then you have the options here, multiple options. Um, just for example, you can have a different frequency and different retention for the logs. And this is in case if you are taking backup for DB. So what we are doing here is, for example, I'm taking backup of the DB every day and I'm keeping it for whatever number of days here, let's say seven days. But I'm taking backup of the logs every 10 minutes and I'm keeping that logs, let's say for three days, just for example. If you do like this, then when you do the recovery of that SQL or the Oracle, you have the point in time recovery capability here, right? Other things you can configure for the BMR, the cloud spin, and the replication, and you can do one-to-one -one replication or multiple replication. So I'm taking backup here every day, keep it for seven days, but I'm replicating to another data center every, let's say, every, every two days, okay? And I'm keeping it there for, let's say, 60 days. Just for example, while the replication to the third data center on a different frequency and different retention as well. Okay, that is the cloud or that is the replication. Now for the cloud archive, if you are going to get rid of the local tapes and you are sending this data to the cloud, whether it is just a storage there, you are not deploying any coisite cluster there. So that is something you can do it from here. You just register that target, external target. It can be NFS as a NAS storage. It can be TAPS or it can be another cloud service provider, right? I'm just selecting the storage. Once I select that one, I need to register it and I need to put the details. So customer is responsible of creating this account name, the access key and share it and then you know, register it within the Coicity cluster here, okay? The uh, cloud spin functionality, this is where the conversion of the virtual machines from the on-prem format to the cloud format. Suppose that you have VMware on-prem, uh, on okay? And you need a DR in the cloud. So let's say in Azure. So you need to convert from VMDK to VHD format, or from that VMware format, the virtual machine, to the Azure format. And this is where the Coincity Cloud Spin come into the play. So I select where I want to uh, send this virtual machine and convert it, let's say for into this uh, AWS subscription. And I'm doing this convert after every backup. And then I transfer the data into that cloud site, right? Okay. And this uh, giving me the ability to run this virtual machines in the cloud if I have any disaster on the on-prem site. Okay. So this is just the basic configuration. You have another multiple options here or different options within the policy, but this is a basic. And, and the, 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 the good thing about the user interface is really simple one. 
But by just looking into the policy configuration from top here, I can tell that this policy, for example, is doing everyday backup for one day, keep it for two days, and I'm doing archiving, and I'm sending to the archive site. Or this one, I'm taking everyday backup, and I keep it for one week, and I'm taking also log backup, and I replicate to another CoinCity cluster. That is the simplicity we are talking about here. Okay, we even have our mobile app, and the mobile app can be used by the admins. You just downloaded that mobile app, CoinCity mobile app from the store, from the, um, depends on the iOS or Android, and you can have all the monitoring and all the metrics coming into your mobile in the app, right, on the go. This is in terms of backup. Then you have the recovery and uh, for the registration, this we talked only about the visualization, but you can have it for the Office 365, for the physical, for the Oracle, SQL, uh, the Active Directory, and the NAS, whatever it is, right? The recovery can be done on the granular level if it is virtual machines or the SQLs or Oracle or AD. And um, so, for example, here I can recover file and folder or folder. And I can search if I know the name of the file and I select it and then download it. If I don't know the name, the exact name of the file, I can just select, let's say, the server or the virtual machine. Okay. And once I select it, so if I come here and I can expand the disk and browse through that disk and see what I want to recover exactly. Right? I add it to the cart and I can add more. And then download it or return it back to the same source. Okay. Uh, recovery also can happen, you know, on the uh, virtual machine level, obviously, and you can recover it to the exact same recenter which you took the backup from or you can recover it to another vCenter as you like, right? So if I'm selecting that this virtual machine, I have the option here to select, do I want to recover from this snapshot or the day before or the day before, like that, which one, okay? So whatever snapshot or the backup I have, I can recover from. Now I have only one option here, local, but if I'm doing replicate to another site, I can select, I want to recover from the other side. So another icons is going to be here as well. And I can select, as I said, multiple virtual machines all together. Or I make a group of the virtual machines when I take the backup. So when I do the recover, I just recover that group. So it's going to recover all the virtual machines within that group. Okay. Uh, this is the test environment where you can clone the virtual machines or DBs. It can be uh, SQL or Oracle and mount as this DB into another um, SQL server, for example, or another or uh, Oracle server. This is for live mount for the DB. Instead of recovering the full database, you can just recover or let's say live mount this DB or virtual machine and then do the operations on it, whether for testing or for the recovery of, uh, of, of something out of, let's say, ground will recover out of this. Any question? Thank you, Mohanad. Is that the end of your presentation? Yes, I think we can. It, it's time to, because I don't see other questions from the okay. attendees, so maybe we can ask. Yes. I think uh, I think we can